Shigeru Miyamoto is born in Kyoto, Japan. With a more than active imagination. He was quoted as saying, um, uh, when I was a child, I did nothing but draw cartoons and uh, manufacture puppets. I had, in elementary school, done a lot of, of making my own puppets and doing puppet shows. But then as I grew up and got into middle school, that was when I really got interested in drawing comic books. His yearning to create led to some very unusual thoughts. And I did think that it would be nice if I could be in a condition where all I had to do or all I really could do was draw comic strips. And so I thought if I could have some kind of illness where I didn't feel any pain or have any trouble but still had to be in the hospital all day and draw comic books, that would be great. Nobody else would, would, would that sound like a normal sentence, but coming from him, it just seems to click. By age 11, Miyamoto becomes obsessed with heroic characters. Well, actually, it was uh, the, on TV where I would see a lot of the puppet shows, and that was where I had gotten the influence to do that. So that was actually kind of a more earlier thing than getting the TV and getting the interest in the superheroes. He goes on to attend Kanazawa College of Industrial Arts and Crafts, taking up the banjo and bluegrass. But he spends most of his time sketching and listening to music. After graduating in 1977, Miyamoto is hired as Nintendo's first industrial designer. Nintendo is better known for manufacturing a variety of goods, from playing cards to toys. I mean, even when I first entered the company, it was really my goal to design and, and ultimately sell these, these products, uh, really toys that I was interested in. Miyamoto begins designing board games and packaging for toys. Impressed with his young upstart, Nintendo chairman Hiroshi Yamauchi reassigns Miyamoto to a team working on computer games. By 1980, a wave of arcade games flood the American market. Asteroids, Space Invaders, and of course, Pac-Man develop a fanatical following. Hoping to capitalize on the wave, Nintendo releases Radarscope, their first arcade game. But the games fail to capture an audience. Desperate for a hit, Yamauchi asks Miyamoto to design a video game using a popular character who loves to eat spinach. We began development on that game uh, originally with the idea of using Popeye. Nintendo negotiates with King Features to use the Popeye comic as a video game, but the Popeye license falls through. And Miyamoto looks to his past for inspiration. Going into the mountains uh, and playing in the mountains as a kid and finding uh, caves and whatnot and that sort of exploration too really lingered in my memory. And so later on in life, when I did start making video games, it, it uh, kind of came back into, into play in my imagination. You know, he's a kid at heart. You can kind of see that. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to create things that would shock or surprise or bring enjoyment to people. He finds exactly that in a goofy gorilla. Of course, the gorilla would need a keeper in the form of a carpenter. Miyamoto goes to the drawing board. So Mario then became really the perfect game for kind of this jumping around and active expression and just the motion on screen really became the, the best game for that type of action. All he needs now is a name. Kong suggests Gorilla, who is Donkey Stubborn. They combine the words and name the game Donkey Kong. <laughs> to me, Donkey Kong is, holds a very precious place for me because that was really the first time where I was recognized uh, for my work in game design. And unlike its predecessors, Donkey Kong is the first character-based arcade game. His style is mostly visual.